Season 1 Recap! Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel today as we go over everything that happened in the first 25 episodes of Attack on Titan Season 1. I wanted to make this video as I'm going into Season 2 to watch with you guys. For those of you who are brand new around here and don't have the time or mental capacity to go back and watch 25 full episodes, this is going to be your dumbed down, condensed version of all the madness, craziness, twisty turns that is Attack on Titan. First thing you gotta know, this show make brain hurt. It's a crazy plot with tons of twists and turns when you think you know something you don't you're absolutely wrong so one of the best things to keep in mind as you're making your way through this show is don't have any presuppositions about anything because you're probably wrong <laughs> i did however call a couple of things and i'll go over that as i go through the recap but yeah we're gonna get right into it i just want to say at the very beginning of this video this is not scripted whatsoever i'm free balling literally everything that comes out of my mouth so if i don't get the storyline correct verbatim for every little detail that happened don't crucify me <laughs> i'm literally just speaking off the knowledge i got inside of this bank right here. For starters, let's take a look at our antagonists and our protagonists of the series. Our antagonists being these very mysterious creatures known as Titans. Hi, how are you? They are huge. I mean, real big. They seem kind of mindless. They flail and run around, and their only objective of being alive is killing humans. That's it. All they want to do. They don't care about deer. They don't care about birds. They don't care about each other. They just want to kill humans. And you might have guessed it, our protagonists are the humans. So all the conflicts in the show oh. center around around the humans versus the Titans. So the show opens up with our three main characters, Eren, Mikasa, and Armin. They all are lifelong friends and they grew up in a peaceful village that hasn't been under siege in about a hundred years. Used to their peaceful lives inside of these giant walls preventing titans from getting in, the star main character, Eren Yeager, has dreams of going outside of these walls that protect them. His friends Mikasa and Armin think he's absolutely ridiculous for wanting to do this. And in fact, Mikasa gets so worried that Eren's gonna pursue the stream that she tells his parents about it. When she does, everybody's like, Hold up! Eren's mom was fully against this, she did not want her son going outside of the walls with the military to learn anything about the Titans. But Eren's dad didn't tell him he couldn't do it. We don't know what that does, but it's it's significant. Shortly after this family disagreement, the town, which has not been in trouble for over a hundred years, was attacked by Titans. Titans that Eren wanted to see so bad finally came to him. They brought delivery of hot fresh death. So the town gets attacked for the first time in over a hundred years. Many people lose their lives. There's attempts for evacuations to happen. And as everyone is scrambling trying to get out of the town and evacuate, Armin and Mikasa decide to go back to Eren's home to find Eren's mom. The reason being so that they can all evacuate together. This is the first very sad moment of the entire series as we find Eren's mom trapped under some fallen debris from where the Titans have attacked. It's not possible for Eren and Mikasa to lift her out of the debris. She is stuck there. The debris has supposedly crushed her legs and not only that, but a giant Titan starts heading toward all of them standing there by the rubble. Just as it looked like Eren's mom was about to die, one of the brave and bold, strong military members named Hannes showed up to save the day until he didn't. <laughs> you gotta keep in mind, there's not been an attack on this town in a hundred years, so no one really knows what the Titans look like, unless you are a member of the specific regiment of the military that was responsible for going outside the walls, the same one in which Eren wanted to join when he got older, known as the Survey Corps. Hannes sees this big Titan running towards him, he gets freaked out, turns around with the kids, and the decision to leave the mother behind in the rubble has been made. As Eren is on the back of Hannes, walking away from this tragic sight. It gets even more tragic when the Titan finds Eren's mom, snaps her in half, and eats her like a Snickers bar. This image plays over and over again in Eren's mind all throughout the series. This is when he made the resolution that he was going to destroy all Titans. From here, he was evacuated with Armin and Mikasa to an inner portion of the walls, and Eren, along with his two comrades, make a decision that they're going to join the military to fight against these things. They didn't really have, like, a choice. All the people of age to join the military had to at a certain point, but Eren wanted to. He has a vendetta out now against the creatures that took his mom's life. So at this point in time, when Eren, Mikasa, and Armin had joined the military, it was time for them to start training. We don't have too many episodes of their trainee days, but we do know Eren had some issues with ODM gear, otherwise known as maneuver gear, which is essential to movement around the Titans. It's the only way humans can fight against these things. But while training to learn how to use this gear, it was found out that Eren's gear was malfunctioned. He almost failed because everybody thought that he just sucked at using it, when in actuality, it was either just broken or somebody had tampered with it. And again, like I just said, we don't have a whole lot more of their days of going through the military ranks, but this time is important 
important, however, as we get introductions to lots of different characters, such as Connie, Marco, Jean, Potato Lady, also known as Sasha, Krista, and Annie. Annie's really important for later, so remember that name. And then boom, <laughs> fast forward three years later, they are ready to graduate from being trainees. And once they graduate, they have the option of joining one of three different factions. The Garrison, the Survey Corps, or the Military Police. Everybody really wants to be a part of the Military Police because this is a safe, cushiony job within the walls. The Garrison is important for maintaining law and order with inside the walls, but the Survey Corps is different. The Survey Corps goes out into Titan territory to learn more about the Titans and to try to take territory back from the Titans. There was only one day before Aaron, Mikasa, and the others got to decide which faction they were going to join when they were approached and attacked by the Colossal Titan. The same Titan that appeared in the first episode that allowed the attack that led to Aaron's mom's death. He appeared out of nowhere. He kicked a hole in the wall and then he just left. <laughs> Him kicking in the gate to Wall Rose presented a lot of problems. It meant the fall of another wall, the Titans were going to advance, more people were going to die. So it was up to Aaron and the others to take this wall back. So yeah, we're really excited to go take this wall back from the Titans. We're faster, we got sharp blade. But hold up! A lot of people got eaten. <laughs> in the midst of all the fighting, Aaron and Armin ran into a titan that kind of looked like Moses. He tried to eat Armin, but Aaron saved him and Aaron got eaten and Aaron was dead. <laughs> so there you go, Mindbender, right? The main character gets killed off after a couple of episodes. That's, that's the end. He's, he's just dead. While it was believed that Aaron was dead, the fighting hadn't ceased yet. As the fighting progressed, Mikasa found herself in between two titans. As they were running toward her, she jumped out of the way, and one titan ended up landing a huge blow on the other. This angry titan killed every other titan that was in his path. Fins them off left and right, helping the humans take the wall back little by little, until he dies, because he got exhausted. We all get tired sometimes. <laughs> but as his body fell over and his flesh decayed, all the steam rose from his body. Everybody looks down and sees, lo and behold, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron was inside the body of this Titan. He wasn't just fighting just to fight. He was fighting because he was Aaron and he wanted to kill all of the Titans. This obviously confused everybody. Some people thought Aaron was working for the Titans and they should accuse him of treason and kill him on the spot. But Armin and Mikasa pleaded on his behalf saying he's not against anybody on the human side. But the military commander was like, nah, fire a cannon at him. So we fired a cannon at him. You know what Aaron did? He blocked it because he turned into a Titan by biting his hand. Yeah, I know. It's really confusing at this point too for me. So, so far, we learned that Aaron actually is this Titan and he could turn into it by making himself bleed. And right before they fire another cannonball at him, someone named Pixies steps in. He sees promise in Aaron and he really saved his life. Pixies sees Aaron and he believes he can actually help the human race. So he gives Aaron a shot. He says, if you can turn back into a Titan like you just did and seal up the hole in the wall with a giant boulder, we will consider letting you live. So Aaron's like, bet, I can turn into a Titan, no problem. So he does, but he can't control it. Mikasa tries to get Aaron to realize that it's her and he shouldn't be attacking humans because he is a human. He still doesn't realize, has no control whatsoever, and ends up punching himself in the face and taking a nap. In this dream state, he was with his mother, his father, and Mikasa again, and after a lot of yelling in his ear and pleading with him, Armin finally got him to wake up. This time when Aaron woke up, he had a clear objective in mind. The number one, seal the giant hole in the wall, and number two, defeat all the titans. What he swore to do when he saw his mother get eaten again, like a Snickers bar. The next episode opens up with him turning into a titan again, successfully moving the boulder in front of the hole in the wall. After he successfully does this, he becomes exhausted and collapses again. Keep in mind that over the course of a day, he has transformed multiple times from human to titan, so the most bad, super cool character named Levi shows up to cut him out of this titan body and bring him to safety, which the safety is a jail cell. <laughs> While Aaron was incapacitated, they decided to lock him up for the time being. When he came to, he realized because he was successful, he had an offer to join the Survey Corps, the faction that he wanted to be a part of since he was a little kid. He would be watched and trained by two of the most elite members of the Survey Corps, Irwin and Levi. He was thrilled to have this happen. His dreams are coming true. He's gonna be able to defeat the Titans alongside his childhood heroes, but only one problem stood in their way. Not everybody was still on board that Titan Aaron 
can control himself. And so for this reason, he had to have a hearing from Santa Claus. <laughs> a judge by the name of Darius Zachary was responsible for Aaron's fate. Some of the townspeople and those within the military police wanted Aaron to be shot dead on sight, while the members of the Survey Corps wanted him to be used as an asset to help humanity. After a lot of back and forth, one of the military police was irked on enough to point a gun at Aaron in the courtroom. Right as he did that, Levi stepped up and gave Aaron a beat down. Beat him to a pulp in front of the entire courthouse to prove that he can keep Aaron in check. What the fuck? Because of this staged beatdown, Aaron was allowed to live and join the Survey Corps. He was brought to a new location where he would be hidden and he would train. So awesome, the hole was sealed up, Aaron's fate has been secured, he's going to live. Cleaning up through the city was happening, there were a lot of casualties, one of which being Marco, Jean's closest friend. But one really important thing to know is that it doesn't seem like Marco died normally. We don't know exactly how Marco died. They don't even cover it in season one, but I keep mentioning that it feels weird. This actually worked in a positive direction to help inspire Jean to want revenge on the Titans. Basically, every character we don't know joined the military police, and every character we did know joined the Survey Corps because they were inspired by Aaron and his actions. Everybody, I should say, except for Annie. Even characters like Jean, who started the series off very scared and wanting a life of luxury and comfort within the military police, were so moved by Aaron's words and even the death of his friend and comrade Marco that he joined the Survey Corps. So now that the whole squad is together and we have the Survey Corps form, there is one really important objective that ties into the beginning of the series. The basement that Aaron's dad mentioned. Aaron has a key to this basement and that basement is the crucial key to learning everything about the Titans. By the way, we don't know where Aaron's dad is this whole season. We haven't seen him once since the fall of Aaron's home, but he knows he has to make it to the basement. But in order for this to happen, humanity has to take more of the walls back. And this is where the show really starts. There needed to be a test run before they actually went out to the basement, so the 57th expedition beyond the walls was set up. All of the Survey Corps members got ready to go beyond the walls to get some more information on the Titans, see if they could clear some extra land. They went out with a plan, all bold and brave, but you might have guessed it. Things don't happen in the show the way you want them to. <laughs> they ran into aberrant titans, and what are those, Dukaja? They are titans that don't behave normally. They act very strangely, it's hard to tell any kind of goal or objective from these things, but they're erratic and they need to be eradicated. So as the plans are being followed and all the Survey Corps are beyond the walls, they are approached by a very, very different aberrant titan. I'm fast as f boy. And this one has boobs. Which is weird because at this point in time, it was believed that there were no female titans, only male. But yeah, we get our first female titan of the series. And it's clear to tell right off the bat that she's an aberrant because she's not interested in killing any of the humans. She just runs right by them. Well, I say that unless they kind of like irk her on and get in her way and then she just kind of steps on them. Armin actually happened to get in her way and she surprisingly didn't kill him, which was really weird. Like why would this titan, when we know titans only want to see the death of humans, why would she just pull Armin's hood back, look at him, and keep running? She has a clear objective, a clear motive for what she wants to do. Armin is big brain, so he picks up on this really quickly. He knows the female titan is after Eren. So some kind of plan has to go down where they distract her or slow her down from getting to Eren. This would give the rest of the Survey Corps more time to retreat since they know there are bigger threats like the female titan out here. So Armin, Jean, and another character named Reiner, which we met in a very early episode, all decide to work together to distract the female titan from the past. As he's heading to get to Aaron. I said it once, I'm gonna say it again. I think that Reiner knows something that we don't know. And I only say that because I stopped the video at like the perfect frame to see his face look weird. Like he just had this look in his eyes. He was worried that Arm was piecing something together. So they do it, they distract her. They get her off the path that she was heading toward Aaron. So they thought, but again, this is attack on Titan. Nothing goes the way you want it to. She heads in an opposite direction from them. And we quickly learn that the opposite direction is actually where Aaron is at. Aaron at the time, was currently with Irwin and Levi, and Irwin ain't no dummy. He knew that the female Titan was gonna be after Aaron, or something, at least, was gonna be after him. So out of the blue, Irwin decides that he's gonna bring the entire army through the forest, with some going around the sides. He doesn't explain this plan to anybody, everybody just has to trust his judgment and know he has something in mind. But it was big brain all along, because Irwin wanted to draw the Titan that was after Aaron into the forest so that they could ambush her. The forest is a perfect place for maneuver gear, there's lots of areas to latch 
latch onto great combat space for human beings. And then we have victory because it worked. We ambushed her. We have caught the female Titan. Now it's time to cut into her and see who is this? There's somebody inside this Titan controlling it. It obviously has the same powers that Aaron does. So who else could possibly potentially control the body of a Titan? We're going to find out obviously because I mean, that's just how things go in the show. No, they go to cut into her, but she hardens the back of her neck because she can do that <laughs> and they can't get in. They try relentlessly, but after a while, she just starts to scream really loudly and that same scream attracted a ton of Titans to her body to devour it. Yes, devour it. <laughs> this person, whoever is inside of the female Titan's body was willing to sacrifice themselves so that human beings never learned anything about Titans. So we thought. The person inside of the Titan body actually ended up getting away. She wasn't devoured in the mess. She slipped right through the cracks and made her way back to Aaron's group and she totally annihilated every single one of Aaron's comrades that were currently around him. Petra died. Olo died. The whole squad was dead. This was especially hard for Aaron because he was tempted so many times to turn back into a Titan to fight this female Titan, but his comrades pleaded with him to trust the plan that Irwin had to capture the female Titan, not turn into a Titan himself and just have faith in them. But he learned that just having faith in your comrades alone won't get the job done all the time. So he's like, you know what, dude? If you want to get something done right, do it yourself. He bites down, he becomes a Titan, and thus we have the first fight between Aaron and the female Titan. It was so sick. It was a great battle sequence in the forest. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a long time, but in the end, the female Titan got the better of Aaron. She ended up roundhouse kicking his head off. His body falls to the ground, and for the second time in this series, Aaron was eaten. <laughs> Hey, yeah, could I get one of Aaron Jaeger? The female Titan didn't want to kill Aaron, though. She just wanted to capture him and bring him somewhere. So she puts him in his mouth, stands up, starts to leave, then Levi's like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> Cuts right into her in the most bad way possible. I mean, like, he wrecked this female Titan. They ended up saving Aaron and getting away, leaving the female Titan in the forest. It was time now to retreat back to the walls. The 57th expedition to be on the walls to learn more about the Titans and make progression was a failure. They lost so many men, wasted a ton of tax dollars. Townspeople were upset about this when they made their way back. And as Aaron was like super mad about hearing the townspeople gripe about all the losses they had, he sits up and we got a really cool scene that I just love seeing of kids looking at the Survey Corps, admiring them. He, along with the rest of the Survey Corps, became the new beacon of hope for the next generation of the town. That's great and all, but we have a big problem of the fact that the expedition was a failure. And so now fate of Aaron, as well as the Survey core as a whole was up in the air. They were sentenced to a new hearing and it was almost guaranteed that Aaron was going to be handed over to the military police and ultimately probably killed. But you know who has a big brain? Aaron's friend, Armin. Armin has a big brain. Armin knows that he has one comrade that did not join the survey corps but instead the military police on decision day. That person being Annie. He said, hey, Aaron's got this hearing after the expedition was a failure and he most likely will die if you don't help us escape from the military police. They went back and forth for a while. She didn't want to help them escape. He convinced her to by saying she'd be a bad person if she didn't. She was like, I'm not gonna be a bad person. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And they do it pretty easily. They literally just walked out of the military police HQ. As Annie helps Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin escape, they bring her to an underground passageway. They're like, come on, man, we gotta go through here because this is the other side of the wall. She's He's like, nah, I don't go underground. They're like, why? Why would a normal person not want to go underground? And as they're having dialogue going back and forth, Annie sits there and pieces together that they know that she is the female titan. It was obvious. I, the first time I saw her in the series as the female titan, I called it. Number one, her titan form looks exactly like her human form. Number two, she's literally the only person except for Marco because he's dead that didn't join the survey corps. It just makes sense that Annie is the odd one out. It had to be her this whole time. The townspeople and the survey corps rush at her to subdue her, but then she pulls out her ring, cuts herself, turns into the female titan. Now we're in the end game. But now Annie's a titan and we got a problem because plan A failed. It's time for plan B. Aaron's gonna bite his hand, turn her to a titan and fight her. But then he's like, nah, man, I can't do that to Annie. She's my homie. Aaron doesn't want to fight her because they were comrades. Even though she killed tons of people, even his closest comrades on the survey corps right in front of him. Aaron's conflicted. He has too much humanity to take out another human being. So he can't turn into a titan because he has to have a clear objective before he can actually transform. We learned this in a previous episode when he was training with the survey corps. Aaron actually can't do anything at all unless he has a specific goal 
goal in mind. So you know what that got him? Crushed. He was crushed by the foot of Annie. While in the rubble, he was approached by Armin and was reminded that if he can't do this, he's not going to save humanity. He's got to overcome all the feelings he feels so that he can save everyone around him. And eventually, he did. He overcame all of the fear he had about this. All of the reservations to fighting Annie were forgotten about because he remembered all of the death of the close ones he held dear to him. So while impaled by some of the rubble that Annie's foot put on top of him, started gushing blood and that along with the objective in his mind was enough for him to transform into a Titan. And it was sick. It was Titan Annie versus Titan Aaron V2 rematch time. It went head to head for the longest time, did monumental damage to the city. And he bashed his head in and we're like, oh no, Aaron's dead. And then he comes back all fiery, ready to go. Round three. He then runs after Annie who was trying to climb the wall for whatever reason. He grabs her leg and was able to pull her down to the floor with the help of Mikasa. Pops her eye out like a grape. Pummels her left and right. We see a whole bunch of flashbacks of Annie's past. Right at the very end when he could have finished her, he didn't. Aaron couldn't bring himself to kill Annie. The tail end of their fight kind of confused me. It seemed like they were fusing together and as Aaron couldn't kill Annie, she crystallized herself. Don't know exactly what she's encapsulated in, but she's now frozen in place so nobody can get any information out of her. I guess it was like some kind of last minute ultimate defense system to block humans from learning information about the Titans. But the episode ends off with Annie being taken into custody, put underground to have research done on her. Aaron wakes up inside of a hospital with arms. Mikasa and Jean and at this point with Annie being in custody it's time for the humans to actually strike back and that's where the whole season ends off except for one little thing at the very end of the episode like after the credits that's how far at the end I mean one of the cracks in the wall Annie made as she was scaling it falls open and we see the face of some Titan inside of the wall what how long has this thing been here what kind of Titan is this it's gonna all tie together I know in season two and three I'm, I'm sure of it. But man, what a cliffhanger to leave our season on. And I think for the most part, with the exception of some minor details, that's pretty much the whole story up until this point. 25 episodes in. That is Attack on Titan season number one. I think I did okay at explaining it. Like I said, again, I don't have a script. I'm literally freeballing this off of the top of my head. The memory that I have on this show from watching the 25 episodes, it's all I got. I have nothing else. Regardless, I think that gives you a base knowledge of some of the main characters, the conflicts, the protagonist, the antagonist. I think I'll end off this video with saying some of my predictions, I guess. Number one, again, I'm not going to skip over the point that I think Reiner knows more than we think he knows. I don't know what that means, but I think that's true. Number two, we're going to have to have some kind of knowledge on where the dad has been for the last 25 episodes. This is like over three plus years. I haven't heard about anything. We haven't seen anything about the dad. He only pops up here and there in visions or dreams that Aaron has. Number three, for love interest, I can see everybody sipping over Krista. She's kind of cute. It'd be really crazy if like Mikasa and Aaron developed a love interest in the next season. Because they're not brother and sister. I mean, they grew up together for the most part, but they aren't blood related. I think Irwin and Levi are the good guys. I mean, what really is good at this point? What was Annie fighting for? What was her flashbacks for? What did her dad do that he was so sorry about? I want to say I don't think Annie and her motives are going to be as bad as we think they are. I can't really buy into the idea that she just wants to kill the human race just to kill them. Perhaps something is just wrong with the current system and she wants to make some kind of changes in that. And in order for that to be done, their current way of living has to be disrupted. There has to be some kind of new order. So maybe that's what Annie's interested in. Maybe it's what some other Titan humans are interested in. That's also my final prediction. There's going to be a lot more Titan humans. There's got to be. Annie and Aaron cannot be the only two that have this ability. I think that the Colossal Titan and the Armored Titan are probably humans. I don't know who, but they probably are people. So yeah, there's your breakdown of season number one. Hopefully everything I said made sense. Maybe it doesn't and I'm so sorry, but it made sense to my brain and I really enjoyed ranting about it because I love this show. The show has been so great so far. Thank you guys for watching all the videos if you have to this point. Excited to share some of my theories and guesses, predictions with you guys. Yeah, we have a fun season two through four ahead. Again, if you want to watch any of the videos, there is a playlist on the channel. I have a link in the description down below. You can watch all the videos if you want. Please do it. I need to make more money this month. But there you go, Attack on the Titan explained in dumb dumb terms. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this recap. It was a lot of fun to film and if you did and you don't mind doing so, make sure you go ahead and drop a sub like. That's a subscribe, a like, and a comment. And I will see you in the next reaction video.